Okay, I'd like to show you how I try to eliminate bridging of paint on cabinet doors when spraying them. So I'd like to use these little pick, little picks that you can get from uh, Harbor Freight or Tractor Supply. You simply, uh, between every coat of primer and paint, you simply run that pick back and forth lightly along the uh, the edges. See these, the panel on that door needs to be free floating, so you don't want paint uh, bridging between the panel and the rail. So just go lightly. If you go too hard, you're going to dig into the wood and make an ugly line, but you want to go as light as possible and just kind of break up that paint line and uh, get out any dust that, that might be stuck in there. Then you can sand your door and then um, you just, just dig out anything that might be there. Sometimes uh, on when refinishing cabinet doors, like old cabinet doors, some of those some of those panels are in there really tight. It's pretty much almost impossible. But this is a new cabinet door, and even on this new cabinet door, the the edges were pretty tight. But uh, I had to do that between every coat of paint. All right. Um, so I'm using the Malazy HK R114, and um, putting the HNB1 catalyst into that. I'm doing 10% catalyst. Now, because we're trying to avoid bridging and these doors have a really tight gap, I'm gonna actually thin it even though I'm spraying with an airless. So um, if you're spraying with HVLP or air assisted airless, you're gonna have to thin it anyway. Uh, typically I don't thin my paints for an airless unless I'm trying to avoid bridging. Okay, so the thinner that I'm going to use, you can use just straight water. Malazy recommends 5% water, but I know people are thinning this stuff up to 10%, and 10% with a catalyst in it, you almost got to thin 10% if you're going to run this through an HVLP. If you're not running HVLP, 5% uh, is okay. Now, instead of using water, I'm going to use a product from Envirolac, the ELRX-10-010, uh, got a little paint on there. This is a waterborne reducer, and uh, this is supposed to be able to, to bring down the viscosity without lowering the solid content as much as if you're using water. So I'm going to use this at about 5%, so you don't need to use as high... Uh, a ratio as you do with water. So thinning with 5% of this stuff is probably going to be equivalent to thinning with 10% water. Alright, so um, I like to use the simple little kitchen scales for this kind of stuff. I use disposable cups, so I measure out my paint. I know I've got 80 ounces of paint, and I zero out my cup, and I put 8 ounces of hardener in it. And now uh, to get 5% thinner, I need 4 ounces. So a little bit of this stuff goes a long way. Basically all I do is I just reach in here with my cup, and I uh, take a little guess and then I put it on my scales. All right, I'm at 3.3, I need just a little more. 4% uh, would be at five. I mean, four ounces would be at 5%. And I don't mind if it's just a little under. All right, so right there, I'm right on at four. Okay, so always mix your catalyst in first. I've done that already and I'm just going to add this now. Then I can throw away my cup. I don't have to touch a dirty cup with a catalyst in it or the thinner or anything.
or you can see it's like um, it's kind of like coffee creamer now half and half and before it was it was more like whipping cream all right again if I would be spraying a door where bridging is not an issue and uh, if I'm spraying with an airless no need to thin at all actually it's better not to thin you can put um, a nice heavy coat with the right wet mills of course about four to five wet mills on a door in this case I'm only going to shoot probably about three that way uh, a thinner product about three wet mills just where it flows out nice and bridging uh, will not be an issue all right I'll show you that uh, in a minute number one blow everything off really well especially in these cracks because I don't want any dust in there because that's what causes bridging so we're going to spray as thin as possible and yet get enough of paint on there so it flows out so I'm using uh, the Malaysia uh, 2k poly I did add some thinner for the purpose of not bridging because this is a really tight gap all the way around there and that panel in the center is a free floating panel and it we can't have the paint bridging. Bridging is when paint gets in this crack and it, it uh, connects the two. And it, it looks ugly and it's, it shouldn't be there because it's going to crack. So there are ways of doing that. Uh, when I sand this, uh, after each coat of primer, I take this little dental pick. You can buy these at a Harbor Freight or a hardware store. And I just scrape out whatever little bits of paint may be in there and um, sand it blow it out good and now we're ready to paint okay so to spray a door properly we're going to start by spraying all the edges i'm just going to mimic it and i'm going to show you real time so we just spray one pass on each edge all right to, to get a nice uniform coat on this door we're going to go all the way around then we're going to start at this back edge and we're going to pull the trigger of this gun so it's blowing off the door and once it's blowing paint then we can take a swipe across and release and then um, remembering that this this tip in here gives about a six inch pattern all right so we want to hold our gun about eight inches ten inches twelve inches um, minimum of probably eight inches if you get too close you're going to inject a lot of air into your uh, paint so you want to stay up at least I would say a minimum of eight inches so a six inch pattern we want to hit this edge so that about half of it is going to be shooting out over all right so we're going to shoot so that it hits here and now instead of coming over and going on our next pass i come back one more time right over that edge same way half of it going out over so i'm going to go like this and like this and then i'm going to come over and i'm going to use the middle I'm going to use um, this line I'm going to be in about three inches about three inches went out three inches is going to be on the door and it'll be kind of a line where the paint was now I'm going to take my six inch pattern and shoot right across the middle so that half of it is overlapping three inches is going to come back on here and three inches is going to hit an unpaint the unpainted part of the door and then we're going to come back and do that again keep shifting and do that again until we get to this last edge we want to make sure again that we're that the center of our pattern is right on this edge three inches on the door three inches off the door that's using a 306 tip so three inches is always the first number to three is half of our uh, fan pattern and i'm going to hit this twice as well um, i haven't really thought through the science behind that except that i just know that when you only hit the edges once it's always a little skimpy there so I I hit each edge twice and then overlap as I come across then I will come back across lightly misting it this way all right I'll show you how I do that I don't go quite as heavy there I just give it a little lighter coat that helps to just get the right mill thickness on there I uh, suppose you could skip that step if you're getting it heavy enough the first time but it's probably better to go a little lighter the first time and then box coat it by going the other direction that just help you get it more uniform all right so i'm going to start my fan and i'm going to show you how i do that um, 
I usually wear a respirator. I might leave it off just as I'm doing this door so I can show you how to do it. First thing, I'm going to blow it off really well. Blow out these cracks really well. Run your hand over it a little bit. You'll feel the dirt, the dust. And you can feel when the dust is gone. You can feel when it's smooth. All right, I'm going to... Yeah, just like that. Start off, end off. Okay, about that speed. Now I go to my back edge. Again, now I come over about uh, three inches. And over three inches, over three inches. And one final pass there. Now I'm just going to do the same thing here, just a little lighter. Just like that. Now I want to take a look at this in the light. And uh, it looks nice and uniform. If this wouldn't be uniform, you'd see spots where there's a lot of little holes where the paint isn't flowing together well. Okay, so if you see anything like that, just take your gun and give it another pass or so. Okay, so let's recap some of the things we talked about on how to eliminate or avoid bridging as much as possible. Always use light coats of paint. That includes your primer coats. Go as light as possible. Hold your gun perpendicular to the door. Stay at least eight inches away. Uh, put light coats on. It's better to put a light coat on and then Go back over it the second time with another light coat if needed. Practice on scrap wood or doors. Check your mill thickness with a, uh, a mill gauge. And, um, and take a look at, at the piece you sprayed in the light and see if there's paint buildup in the uh, gaps. If there's a lot of paint, you, you have to go move a little faster with your gun. If there's not enough of paint, you're going to see spots where the paint doesn't flow out well. There might be little pinholes, so that means you may need to slow down. Um, so practice your speed, practice your overlap. And uh, between the coats, remember to use that little pick. Scrape out, the, uh, scrape out all the corners and the gaps lightly back and forth. Blow it out very well before spraying to get out all loose particles and dust. If you follow these steps carefully using using um, properly thin materials, proper speed, proper overlap, you should have very little problem with bridging of paint on your door gaps. Now if you're refinishing doors you may have a problem. Some of the older cabinet doors had very tight gaps where the panels may be very tight against the rails. In those cases, it's pretty much impossible to eliminate them. But on a new cabinet door, by following these steps, you should be able to produce a beautiful paint job with nice lines all the way around the panel. Thank you for watching. S subscribe to this channel if you want to see more tips on cabinet painting, cabinet refacing, cabinet hardware, and building cabinets.